little story about Aramana's roses because uh, I'm making rose hips uh, cordial with them today. So they're blooming and they're having their rose hips at the moment. Uh, as you can see, I did a harvest already. So the ones that are on the bush right now, they, they seem to be red, but they're still very, very firm. And the ones that you look for, actually, they're, they're like already, this one is starting to soften. Uh, and the softer, softer they are, of course, the more sugar they'll have. And also then when you boil them for your syrup, you see that there's, there's purple ones and, and not, not, not th this is bindweed, we don't want that. <laughs> but you have white roses and you have purple roses, pink ones. Um, but uh, and you can use of course the rose hips in like vinegar to make rose vinegar or in your drinks in your cocktails or well you can do loads of stuff just type it in on the internet and you get like a whole thing and here that I found one that's just a bit soft this one if you squeeze it like the imprint stays in the thing you see so this is starting to be really nice and soft and then you have to be quick at least at our place because we have a zillion birds and they eat the whole thing and we also have a lot of earwigs uh, and they go in where the tail is the rosette at the bottom um, uh, I, in the meantime whilst we're here <laughs> I'm gonna show you our massive incredible big huge pumpkin it's probably the biggest one that we grow this year look at that I put my foot beside it so you see how big it is and that's only in August so it's definitely gonna be even bigger but i'll go to the kitchen right now and show you the process that i've done because once you've uh, picked them all then you take the the tail ends off that's what i do at least to see if there's any earwigs in it um, and then i halve them so that uh, when you boil them that there will be uh, uh, that, that more water you can also put it through a blender they say um, and it becomes tiny little pieces, but I just have them. And then if you pick them when they're that soft, then they just fall apart when they uh, when they boil. So that's why you pick them and more sugar, and they fall apart when you when you boil them. I'll go three. Um, and a little walk around our gardens as well straight away. So next, what I'll do is like I have a pan right now, and I'm gonna weigh uh, how much I have. And then um, I do half the amount of sugar. So if I have three kilo of fruit, then I do one and a half kilos of sugar. But also this is very different again for each and every person. Some people do one to one. Some people do even less. Um, on the internet they say that rose hip syrup you can't keep longer than one week. So I would definitely suggest to put it in little bottles. Because uh, it's very syrupy and you won't drink that much sugar in a week I imagine. Or in your porridge, where, what I'm using it for, so then you um, uh, that you won't waste anything. So here we go. This is where I was. These I was taking off the ends. All the seeds come out, and the seeds have little tiny hairs, which if they do get in your throat, they're very itchy. So you don't want that. Um, so here they are, all halved, and I'm gonna make it this time with um, just as a trial with cinnamon, uh, which I broke up. And this is sage. I thought I'm gonna try that out, what that will taste like, to have a little bit of a sage taste to the cordial. Um, and then I'll always use demerara sugar, or repadura is even better, but I only had this one. I think it's better than white sugar. And then you need a cheesecloth like this. Um, it is washed, it looks dirty, but it's washed. Um, so that's for when you've boiled this, you boil it shortly and then you let it stand for a while so it can steep into the water. And I think this is about three kilos of fruit, so you can do uh, one and a half liters of water for the first time. And then you uh, pour this whole thing after it has boiled for a few minutes and you let it steep and cool down for a while. You pull it pour it through a coliander and press it with a spoon through the coliander. And then that juice you put aside and then you add another one and a half liters of water, put it back on the fire until it boils, let it steep again for a little while and cool down and again put it through the coriander and then the pulp that's left after that you put into this cheesecloth so you can really get everything out that's in there at that stage uh, and then you add the two liquids together uh, bring it back to a simmer and dissolve the amount of sugar that you're using so you can choose that yourself 
Um, and then you put it in sterilized bottles. So I've got tiny little bottles like these. I have to clean this one. I, um, but then all little jars like that. Uh, like the jars you can put in the oven. You just put the oven on like uh, 150 degrees until the light goes off. So it has reached the temperature. And then you can just leave them in the oven but turn the oven off until you can pour it in there. Um, and be careful with those type of lids because they will melt. So you can't put that in the oven too hot or even in, in water because those ones will melt. So you have to be careful with that. You can take them off on the sides though. Uh, but you have to be careful to remember that <laughs> as it went wrong with me sometimes and they're drooping all over the place. And then label it because at the end you never know what you did, especially when you make lots of stuff. And there, there you go. That's your rose hip cereal, um, uh, syrup. <laughs>